Hello, ICDT attendees. My name is Jim Murphy, and I'm honored to speak on behalf of this talented group of scientists at GE Research in upstate New York. Today, I'm going to speak to you about our market-leading wide-color gamut narrowband phosphors and the path towards enabling next-generation displays. Whether it be for lighting or display products, the goal of the backlight is usually to generate white light through combining blue, green, and red luminescence. The blue, of course, comes from the LED, while the green and red emission are produced from phosphors. When you mix particular ratios of green and red phosphor powders into a silicone and place that mixture on top of an LED, you get white light. And phosphor converted white light LEDs is where we make the bulk of our revenue in the display industry today. Today's talk will touch upon four areas. First, I will provide a bit of background on the commercial success of our narrow band red emitting KSF phosphor. Then I will present the three areas in which our R&D team continues to innovate for next generation displays. First, to complement our narrow band red emitting KSF phosphor, we're developing a narrow band green phosphor to enable higher color quality, wider color gamut on chip phosphor solutions. Secondly, we are focused on commercializing a new smaller type of KSF phosphor to meet the needs of the newly emerging 2D backlit market sector, which may contain many LEDs. There are three architectures for small size KSF phosphor in this direct lit space. First, KSF on chip, remote parts, or KSF magenta LEDs. And last but not least, looking out more into the future, our third area of development is in using KSF phosphor for micro LED applications. We have developed submicron and even nano KSF phosphor types for micro LED applications, as well as inks and photoresists that can be used to make films and even inkjet printed parts. For those not familiar with KSF phosphor technology by GE, I'm showing some properties of the material here. The phosphor is called PFS or KSF in Asia because the composition is potassium fluorosilicate doped with manganese. PFS and KSF mean the same thing, and for the remainder of this talk, I will use the term KSF. KSF has five emission peaks, each of which is below two nanometers in full width half max. This line emission centered at 631 nanometers is what enables wide color gamut displays. A license is required by GE to use KSF phosphor in the display industry, and we partner with current lighting solutions for phosphor manufacturing. There are now more than 40 billion KSF containing LEDs sold into the display industry. We have 19 licensees in six countries, and we are very proud that we have penetrated all four major market display sectors, which I will show on the next slide. Unlike other competing technologies, the excellent performance, robust nature, and cost effectiveness of using KSF phosphor has resulted in our technology being the wide color gamut ready emitting material of choice in all four major market sectors. You can find KSF in smartphones, including new ultra rugged phones for first responders. KSF is really doing exceptionally well in monitors and laptops, as KSF is most often chosen when battery life, energy efficiency and color quality matter. Here we show KSF in the 2020 SID display of the year, which is a 2D backlit monitor, as well as a new Dell gaming laptop that has a 300 Hertz refresh rate. It is in the iPad and the Samsung tablets, as well as several others. And it can be found in TVs by several companies, including 4K high dynamic range, full array local dimming TVs by Sony. Although I've just shown that KSF has been commercialized across all display types, the full potential of KSF phosphor technology is sometimes not realized in practice because it is paired with a green phosphor that is broadband emitting or has asymmetric emission. The black emission spectra shows our narrow band red KSF phosphor technology using combination with one of the current industry standard green phosphors known as beta Cylon. You can see that beta Cylon has asymmetric emission that continues into the red KSF emission region, which has an effect of decreasing the display color quality. Keep in mind that this beta Cylon KSF combination can attain very wide color gamut, but we can do even better. As I'm showing with the red emission spectra, we are developing new types of narrow band green phosphors that have no emission into the red pixel to improve color quality beyond where phosphor converted LEDs are today. 
These new green phosphors have excellent reliability to high temperature and humidity, and we show good performance even at smaller sizes that would be applicable to remote parts. The green compositions have good enough reliability to be used on chip or they can be synthesized in small size for remote applications. The narrow emission allows for best in class color quality and we can now attain brightness levels that exceed that of quantum dots. We have multiple compositions under development that can enable 100% DCI-P3 and Adobe color space and our compositions have the same or stronger absorbance of blue light than beta Cylon so that less phosphor is used to hit a given color point. Our quantum efficiencies improve every month and customer sampling is now underway. Pivoting back to our red phosphor now, this slide shows how KSF phosphor has evolved throughout the years and has been commercialized in multiple application spaces and form factors, largely because we have developed multiple types of KSF phosphor based on particle size, absorbance, reliability, and cost. We first developed KSF phosphor for lighting applications, where in general LED size is a bit larger and reliability is key. Now in the display industry, there's a trend towards smaller LED sizes, of course, and KSF size must decrease to properly coat these smaller LEDs. As opposed to initial products, where KSF size could be as large as 30 microns, the particle size has been reduced by more than a factor of 10, with quantum efficiencies that continue to be above 90% in commercialized products. The remainder of this talk will cover our small size KSF phosphor development for mini LED and micro LED applications, where the focus of our R&D is to develop submicron and even more recently, nano KSF types. This slide shows the three form factors in which KSF has been commercialized in the 2D backlit market, some of which may contain mini LEDs. The easiest to integrate wide color gamut solution is KSF on chip, where just like in a traditional phosphor converted white LED, you just take a bit of KSF, combine it with a reliable green phosphor, mix it into a silicone binder and place it directly on a small size LED. The stability of KSF to air, blue flux, temperature and humidity make this a cost effective solution. A second form factor involves putting our small size KSF phosphor into a remote part, along with a green phosphor that may not have on chip reliability. This allows a wider variety of green phosphors to be used, which may not have on chip reliability, but a more narrow full width half max, so that may result in improved color quality and displays with best in class brightness, high dynamic range, and contrast ratio. This type of form factor has just been commercialized in the past year, and you will soon see more exciting commercialized products that use this architecture. The green phosphor may be a conventional phosphor, like I show in this commercialized part here, or quantum dots, like I'm showing in this nanolumi film that contain green perovskite quantum dots used in combination with our small size KSF phosphor. A third form factor that has recently been commercialized on a small scale, if you look at recent press releases, is another hybrid solution where KSF phosphor is deposited on a blue LED to make what's known as a magenta LED. So companies like Nanolumi, Aventama, and TCL show that they can attain amazing color quality using magenta LEDs in combination with green perovskite quantum dots. This solution takes the best of both worlds where you take the most narrow red, our KSF technology, and combine it with the most narrow green, a perovskite quantum dot, to attain amazing color quality. This is a very exciting area and we look forward to seeing what market develops in this space. The rest of this talk will now focus on the potential of using KSF phosphor for micro LED applications. This is the holy grail of color conversion because as opposed to a magenta LED where a portion of the blue light transmits through the color conversion layer, in micro LED many architectures do require full blue absorption in a very thin film. It is also not clear that color conversion will be used in micro LED architectures as red, green, blue micro LED solutions are improving. But the red micro LED does have the worst performance and so we think that blue micro LED with phosphor conversion to achieve red is a viable alternative. We've developed a highly absorbing bright submicron KSF type, inks and films for micro LED applications. We have patented processes where we believe that we are the only company in the world that can deliver what is required to meet the specifications of KSF in the micro LED market. Most recently, we have begun customer sampling where we can spin coat, blade coat films, provide inks, and even fabricate inkjet printed submicron KSF parts. 
On the right, I show our ink in an inkjet printing cartridge. And to demonstrate feasibility, we printed our GE monogram for fun, as well as various patterns that can mimic coating on top of an LED, a micro LED array. So here's our video on inkjet printing. It's only 18 seconds, uh, so bear with me. Okay, that video of inkjet printing is exciting because it shows that it is feasible to use KSF Phosphor for inkjet printing as an alternative to quantum dots. These next three slides were covered in more detail in our technical paper. My presentation in the color conversion technical session here, so I'll just cover highlights in this presentation. The intention is to educate the audience on the properties of submicron KSF that make it quite attractive for color conversion in micro LED applications relative to quantum dots. So first, this data shows that KSF has better reliability than quantum dots. Encapsulation is not required because it has good stability in air, humidity, temperature, and blue flux so that it enables products that will last a long time. The second figure shows that KSF has more narrow red emission than red quantum dots, which results in higher color quality displays. So shown here are emission spectra from a commercial quantum dot TV. In orange, this is the emission spectra of that TV, overlaid with the red emission spectra of KSF phosphor from a, a TV as well. And without even looking at it, you can just see, without even discussing full with half a max, it's just visually you can see that KSF is more narrow in emission than quantum dots. And this translates to more saturated, higher color quality red colors. And this third figure over here compares the absorption properties of KSF relative to quantum dots. So a strength of quantum dots is that they do have a higher absorption coefficient than KSF for blue light. So out here in the blue light spectra, quantum dots do a good job of absorbing. However, quantum dots, dots absorb all the way through the visible. So they'll absorb green light and they even have self-absorption. That's what we're showing here. So they'll even absorb some of their own emission. So this results in a lower peak quantum efficiencies, especially in dense films that are used in micro LED applications. In contrast, KSF doesn't have as high absorption for blue, but as I've shown earlier, we have types that absorb uh, more strongly than ever. But note the absorption is basically gone by about 500 nanometers. So there is no absorption of green and there's certainly no self-absorption that's going to limit the peak brightness in dense films. I'll show the effects of this on the next slide, but in short, submicron KSF phosphor is more reliable, brighter, and it has wider color gamut than red quantum dots. And so it is a viable alternative for micro LED color conversion. This is exciting data for me to present on comparing quantum dots to KSF for micro LED applications. One important metric in this space is external quantum efficiency, which is a measure of how much red light actually makes it out of a color converting film relative to incident blue photons. An estimate of what the EQE versus thickness for indium phosphide quantum dots is shown here. As you move from very thin films up to about nine microns or so, the EQE increases as quantum dots absorb more blue light. Because of this self-absorption effect I described on the last slide, however, in thicker dense films, the EQE then begins to decrease, resulting in what is known as an inverted U-curve. In comparison, KSF phosphor that is just below one micron in size has an EQE versus thickness curve that looks like this. As I compare these two color conversion solutions, I like to think in terms of three regions. In region one, the stronger blue absorbance of quantum dots will mean that more blue photons get absorbed and converted to red photons. If quantum dots can meet reliability specifications, they should do pretty well here. Region two is where the battle will occur, if you will, as KSF now absorbs enough blue light such that it now surpasses quantum dots in EQE because it has a higher quantum efficiency and no self-absorption. And then finally in region three, it's clear that the higher quantum efficiency, no self-absorption and improved reliability and color quality of KS KSF makes KSF phosphor film superior.
Lastly, this gray curve shows the focus of our R&D team, where we work towards improving EQE, especially in more thin films. And we have line of sight to be here by the end of this year. I'm sure that Quandot companies are focusing on improving their material as well. So it will be very exciting to see what color conversion solutions get commercialized in this space. This slide shows a few examples of phosphor converted micro LED device architectures that allow for thicker color conversion films with reduced crosstalk and improved light conversion efficiency. Intel has a paper on using dielectric metamirrors to better trap blue light and maximize light conversion efficiency. The University of Central Florida showed a paper at SID 2019 with this funnel tube array type of architecture with reflective coating that allows for thicker phosphor layers to be used with minimal color crosstalk and improved efficiency. And a third example was demonstrated by Sharp at SID in 2019, where they use light shielding walls to reduce crosstalk. Although I explained on the last slide that we are innovating at a rapid pace to work towards thinner color conversion layers, design considerations like these would allow for phosphor solutions to be implemented in the near term. Okay, my last slide here, just in summary, uh, comparing small size GE KSF versus quantum dots. Again, I wanna point out that not all KSF is created equal. So um, for our material, uh, the, the color quality uh, is a clear advantage for us over indium phosphide quantum dots. Um, higher quantum efficiency, better reliability in air moisture, high temperature, uh, doesn't degrade in, upon curing doesn't have to be encapsulated, it can if you wish, better reliability under high blue flux and no self-absorption. Um, you know, our material does provide some level of uh, uh, scattering. Um, with quantum dots, you need to add um, scattering agent. That's just a difference. I don't, don't say one's better than the other. It's just a difference in, in the materials. Um, but where do quantum dots when I think there are two areas? Um, I think a, in, in some instances, an LCD-like response time might not be fast enough. And so we don't think this is a huge portion of the micro LED industry, but in those instances, the faster photoluminescent decay time of the quantum dots, once you remove the LCD can be an advantage, I think. Um, but as long as that LCD is present, I wanna say again, the, L the liquid crystal itself is the slowest uh, component in an LCD, not the phosphor. And so there is no difference in response time in an LCD. Um, but where there's a clear win, uh, in my opinion, is it for quantum dots is absorption. So, uh, you know, so it's going to be, like I said, it is very exciting. This field, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll see where uh, th these two types of materials are not always competing. There are, is also room for hybrid, hybrid structures. And uh, we're going to see where this industry goes. So with that being said, I want to thank you for your attention. Thank our licensees, and acknowledge the LED Phosphor team at GE Licensing and GE Research for all of the effort that has been put forth to enable this commercial success. If you have technical collaboration inquiries or questions, please contact me. And for business and licensing inquiries, please contact Rachel. Here's a summary of her talk, and we wish you the best of health in 2021.